demonstration, imitation, and repetition. With that being said, everybody up. <laughs> Your favorite sport? Football. How about yours? How about yours? Soccer? And you? Football? Football. All right. I don't know what your favorite sport is called. My favorite sport, other than handball, was baseball. Okay? First of all, this brings me another point. When I was about 14 years old, I thought I was going to be a baseball player for the rest of my life. A lot of the kids <laughs> yeah, that you're going to be looking at in high school think that they're going to be a baseball player for the rest of their life. I was done by 17. <laughs> Handball is a lifetime sport. I still play it four times a week. That's why we like handball as a good activity for people because it's something they can do for the lifetime. Very, very few, I would say one-tenth of a one percent of the population play football, basketball, baseball after the age of 18. So lifetime sports are important. I don't care if it's handball that you pick, or if it's golf, or if it's tennis, or whatever it is. I suggest that everybody get a good look at some lifetime activity. Okay, and handball happens to be one of them. But going back to the to the calling, what your sport is called. All sports should be called football. Not because football is a great game, and it is a great game, but I don't care what the sport is, the foundation of that sport is in your feet. You've got to move your feet, okay? I don't care what it is. We're gonna go over that footwork right now, okay? And then we're gonna lead from that footwork into the throwing motion. Then we're gonna go from the throwing motion to the hitting motion. And then we're gonna put it all into play. Spread out a little bit. Arms up. Everybody's gonna do what, the, what, what I do, but I always want to keep your mind off of me. If I'm looking from you, from your standpoint, if I turn, I don't want you to turn like that, the same way as I turn. I want you to turn so you're always facing me. Okay? Keep your eyes on me, arms up, turn. Perfect. Go that way. Slide, 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 stop. Go this way. Slide, 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 stop. Turn. 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 Slide, 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 stop, come this way. Stop, turn. All right, so besides getting your blood going a little bit in the morning, some very important lessons to learn there. Number one is it's a slide step. It's not a crossover step, and you'll see why later on. It's a slide step. Number two, getting sideways is extremely important, okay? So if I want to turn 90, I only turn 45, then I'm not getting a complete turn. More on that later. Get your arms back up, facing me, belly button facing me. You're going to hear reference points from me. This is a learning cue. Belly button is a reference point for me. You can use whatever you want when you're teaching it. I just have to use belly button. Arms up, belly button facing me. And you're the opposite of me. I want you to make an L with your right arm. Push your weight back to your back foot. Push your weight to the front foot. Now this is going to weight shift back and forth. Rock back and forth. Keep your front arm up. Keep rocking. Now rest on the back. Stay on the back. Stay on your back. And your front foot, step towards that wall. Land. Okay, keeping your weight back as much as possible. With your front arm, pretend there's a curtain in front of you. Move that curtain out of the way. Start your swing with your elbow. Your elbow leads your swing, curtain's out of the way. Now you're gonna rotate your hips and extend your arm to the full length at the center of your body. Now you're gonna follow through and pivot with your back foot. Okay? Now, if you're sitting there and thinking when you're gonna be playing handball that you're gonna be doing all those things, you're gonna be all, you're gonna get all tied up. So I'm giving you those stages to do. You're just going to do it when you're playing. But that's why we like to teach teachers how to teach it to young people so that it becomes instinctive. And you couldn't teach that to me now. I'm too old. But you're going to be working with young people who you give that information to, bang, they get it right off the bat. And they do it. In other words, don't do, if you're sitting there playing,
plate, you don't really sit there and go, okay, my weight is back, my arm is up, I'm moving, I'm stepping forward, okay, but I'm giving you that information so you have it so you can see when you're watching somebody what they're doing wrong, okay? What's more real fast? Weight back, step with the front foot, move the curtain, lead with the elbow, flex to extend, follow through, okay? Where you get your power, hitting a ball, not just in handball, baseball, golf, tennis, it's all the same stuff. It's the rope, it's the weight shift from the back to the front, how you do it, combined with the rotation of your hips. Okay, rotation of your hips. Arms up, make an L with your left arm. Weight back, weight forward. Weight back, hold it there. Step with that front foot, move the curtain, lead with the elbow, flex to extend, and rotate those hips. Doesn't that look an awful lot like we did with your, with your right hand? The idea, again, <coughs> key words for young people. Sometimes young people, you never know what words are going to motivate them. The word mirror can motivate a young person. Okay? I want you to do with your left hand what you do with your right hand. Ooh. I want you to mirror it. Look at yourself in the mirror. I get that. Something's going to hit with the kid. So one of the, one of the, one of the learning cues can be mirror your two hands. Mirror your two hands. Okay? So we're going to take that, and then we're actually going to throw with the ball. We're going to throw with the ball. But before we do that, I'm going to teach you what we would do with elementary school. You've got, you're going to be dealing with, as you move out, elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools. Elementary school kids, pretty small. We really, really got to go to the basics. Middle school kids, they're a dream to work with, an absolute dream to work with. High school kids, they all know it all. Big challenge, big challenge, okay? So we're going to teach you how to deal with all three of those age levels. So what I would like you to do is to break up and what do we figure about 27, 20, mm, probably so break about up into break, break up into groups of five in like uh, uh, or four or five, whichever wherever it is, and then face each other. So like you two would be over there and you two would be over there facing each other. <laughs> Joel, would you hand a ball to each group? That one and okay. Here we go. Okay. All right, Joel, you and I. This is what this is teaching elementary school kids what's called striking skills. Okay. It's going to go like this, and I actually suggest you say these words or have the students say it. It goes bounce, hit, drop, catch, drop, hit, bounce, catch, drop, hit, bounce, catch, drop, hit, bounce, catch. Okay, stage one. Stage two, same thing, one hand, favorite hand, drop, hit, bounce, catch, drop, hit, bounce, catch. Same thing, non-favorite hand. Drop, hit, bounce, catch. Drop, hit, bounce, catch. Next stage, final stage, we're going to keep the ball in play. Rally. Drop, hit, bounce, hit, bounce, hit, bounce, hit. Switching hands back and forth. Okay, using whatever hand. Okay? All right. One minute on each of those stages, okay? Drop, hit, bounce, catch with two hands. Drop, hit, bounce, catch with your favorite hand. Drop, hit, bounce, catch with your non-favorite hand. Keep the ball in play. Go! I should have brought more balls.
I, I didn't have all the things. I had some smaller, a little bit smaller ones. He, he asked me for four or five, so. hands, they're still not. The listening skills are not great. It's terrible. I think that's it? Maybe so. You sound like a nice guy. <laughs> I, had many, I had many early morning classes too. <laughs> something to stop them. Okay, so a learning cue is one of them. Stop and hold, catch and hold, whatever it is, that'll stop them. Okay, it'll make the attempt at stop them. All right, so I need a volunteer. The volunteers come with me. You was first. Sorry, give me a second. My name is Gary. Always have the young people, make sure they know each other. Okay. Always shake a head. We do a lot of shaking hands in the game of handball. We do a lot of changing of partners. So if we were in a classroom situation right now, we just did everything with the same partner, we would switch partners around. Because in a school situation, you want the kids to get to know everybody. We don't want to uh, generate groups. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go to the next stage. I'm sorry, what's your name? Play. Play. Here. Come on over here to the wall. What we're going to do now, it's the same thing, but we're now going to introduce rebounding skills. So we just did footwork, we moved that on to striking skills, now we're moving over to rebounding skills. So what we're going to do, Blake and I are going to be side by side, and I am going to just roll the ball to make Blake go get it. Okay, roll the ball to me. Okay, roll the ball to Blake. Okay, now. Let me show you what's going to happen. Like you roll the ball to me. This is that, this is just we did this with people that know what they're doing. How do it? Young people will just reach for the ball. Okay, you've got to move. <laughs> you've got to move. So that's what when you when you do this drill with young people. I'm not to tell you the truth. I've only got 50 minutes. So I don't want to put too much more time into the rebounds. But I need to see. But the bottom line is. I want you to make sure the kids move. The phrase that I like to use is, is this ball is pretty stupid. And I like to think of myself as being pretty smart. But every time this ball moves and I don't move, this ball gets smarter and I get dumb. You've got to move to the ball. The other way of looking at it is don't let something happen to you. You make it happen. So if, if I roll the ball to Blake, he just made something happen by going to it. Pull the ball to me. If I don't do it, he's doing it to me. Okay? So, that's rebounding. That's rebounding. Okay. Any questions on that? Basically, I don't want to, uh, uh, I don't think we need to do that drill. But actually, just so you understand it. What I like to do is put the balls back over here. That's a good idea. They need to see the progression more than the real thing. Yeah. But if they don't have fun, then they don't have fun. So it's kind of a compromise, right? right? Between the... So, in this particular 
every single student would have his or her own space. And they would be doing this. And I'm going to walk you through all the things we're going to be doing. But you're not going to get this yet. That's why I'm teaching you this line stuff. So basically, you take the stuff we just talked about, straight back, step forward, move the curtain, flex to extend, follow through. You can be doing it with your favorite hand. You can throw the ball with your favorite hand to the front wall. Okay? Then you would turn around and do the same thing with your non-favorite hand. And you would be as close to the wall as possible. Okay? If, for instance, I was throwing the ball with my favorite hand back here, when it came time to throw you with my non-favorite hand, I would take a couple of steps forward and do it from here. That's called maximum success. Okay. If I try to do something with my non-favorite hand from back here, I'm going to fail. So you have the young person get close to the front wall when they're doing something with their non-favorite hand. Okay. So it would be throwing it with the favorite, throwing it with the non-favorite, then catching it. So it would be throw, bounce, catch, throw, bounce, catch. Then what we would do is we Put the two together. Throw, bounce, catch, and turn. Throw, bounce, catch, and then the next. Got it? Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Have them play with the ball that they're comfortable with. This ball doesn't bounce as much as this ball. So, take that ball, take that ball, take that ball. And take and get the high bounce. All right. Behind the green line. Behind the green line. Now, once again, if we were in, in this gym, you'd be doing this by yourself. But the real world is you're not going to have that much ball space. So what I want you to do is to throw the ball to the front wall. Get, you get to, behind the, this, is your, this is your wall. Okay? Same so you do two lines. Okay? So, I put this target up there. Put this target up there. Basically, the ball will always travel across your shoelaces in a straight line. So, we're not going to use this line right now, that part right now, but for, for, for reference. So, if I throw the ball and I hit my target, okay, I'm pretty close, okay? Let's say, Oh, stand over there for a second because this ball didn't go over. Okay, let's say I throw the ball and it goes over there. What happened? What happened? I just threw the ball and instead of it lined up correctly, instead of hitting that target, it goes over here. What happened? That's right. Any other answers? That's well, that's a random result. <laughs> no, but I was lined up. So make it, okay, that's right. Remember I said we want to make mistakes, okay? The reason the ball went there to the right of that target is I let go of the ball behind my center instead of at my center. Do we have any baseball players here? <laughs> if you ever listen to a baseball game, you'll start hearing them talk about the pitcher's release point. He's not throwing strikes any longer. Well, the release point is the center of your body. So if your release point is back here, instead of the center, the ball is going to go, depending on which hand you're using, to, the, to this side of the target. Okay? Let's say the ball goes to this side of the target. What did I do? I, let, I held on to it too long. I held on to it too long. So the reason that, that, that I stress release point when you're throwing is because, guess what? That release point is also going to be your point of contact when you hit the ball. You're going to hit the ball in the center of your body. If you hit the ball too far out front, too far behind, two things are going to go happen. One is it's not going to go where you want to. I care less about that than the second point is. It may hurt. <laughs> if you do everything correctly, the ball will not hurt. That's what I'm here to teach you is how to make that ball not hurt. Always want to hit the ball in the center of your body. Get used to the center of your body. So try to pick out an imaginary target 
directly in front of you. Try to hit that target. I see some lines here. Okay, you can pick that. That could be a line. Just try to hit that target. Also, try to catch the ball when it comes back to you at the center of your body. If you start catching the ball out there, before long you're releasing the ball out there. If you catch the ball back there, so get used to get really comfortable in the center of that body. First person in line is going to have a ball. They're going to throw the ball to the front wall, try to hit their target. They're going to then go to the back of the line. Next person is going to take a step forward, catch the ball. She's going to throw the ball to the front wall, go to the end of the line. Let's keep this line going. All right, now, let's make a game out of this. Let's make a game out of this. When you get back to the front of your line, catch the ball and show it to me. Same for you, same for you, same for you. I want to see which line can do this quickest. What's the key to doing it quickest? Cooperation. The person behind you, take a look at the person behind you. That person is your partner. You want to throw the ball so that he or she can catch it. If you throw the ball as hard as you want, he or she may not be able to catch it. When you get into the schools and you're teaching handball, the kids are going to throw it as hard as they want. Yeah. So understand, you want to teach them. Make your partner a success. One, two, three, go! Hitting the ball. The next step is hitting the ball. I want every we have to be hold on to all the handballs. I want you to shake the person's hand behind you. Just keep doing it until everybody gets their hands shaking. Alright. Now give that same person a high five. What's up? Alright. The ball is screaming towards you. You have a choice. You can hit it like you're shaking hands, or you can hit it like you're doing a high five. Which way do you think it should be? High five or shaking hands? High five, high five. Let's go shaking hands. Shaking hands, shaking hands, high five, shaking hands. Shaking hands. Shaking hands is the right answer. Okay. Two things that I want you to. First thing is when you did the high five, do the high five again. The noise alone should give you the right answer. Okay? When you're playing the game of handball and you start hearing that, that hurts. You want to hit the ball so that it's quiet. I'm going to bounce the ball to you. Okay? Catch it. One hand. Perfect. Bounce it back to me. That's how you want to hit it. Like you're shaking hands. Okay? By the way, that reminds me. When you're in a class and you've got 30 kids and you've got all kinds of adrenaline running through them, they're running all over the place, and they have to transfer a ball from this person to this person, teach them 
That's how you transfer a ball, by bouncing it to them. Because what they will do is they will throw it to them. One time I filmed a class so I could, I could see, so I could have it for posterity. And this little tiny girl, she's about this big, she just, on cue, she just went, we were doing just what we were talking about here, throwing, she ran right by everybody. Thank God she had eye guards on and thank God nobody hit her. But that's my point, is kids can do stupid things. So when you're in the class, at this next stage, everybody would be wearing eye guards. And we would be we would transfer a ball between students, have them bounce the ball. Okay, it's much safer. I don't have enough eye guards for everybody. We, with this afternoon, we're actually playing. You'll be playing with them, but I'm not going to encumber with you right now. But if this was a PE class, everybody would be wearing eye guards at this point. This is the point where you start to hit the ball. Okay. We've talked about footwork. We've talked about throwing. We've talked about rebounding. We've talked about striking. Now the point is to get it, is to, is to hit the handball. I want you to drop the ball diagonal to your front foot. Okay? Any ideas on why we don't drop the ball at the center of the body or at the back foot? Why do I say drop the ball at the front foot? It's the same way as throwing. You throw it, you release out the front foot. It's part of the answer, but it's not 100% the answer. Any other ideas on why we drop at the front foot? <laughs> that, that, that's getting closer. Remember we talked about release point. The center of the body is my release point. Okay. Remember I also said that that release point is my point of contact. I want to hit the ball at my release point. Let's go way back to set early when we started with this, this drill. Okay. This drill at the weight shift. Did it, remember that I said, and everything's related here. <laughs> remember I said you step with your front foot. By the way, in handball, you don't have a left foot and a right foot. You have a front foot and a back foot. Okay? So when I said step with your front foot, put those two things together. Your point of contact is the center of your body, and you are stepping forward with your front foot. The reason I want you to drop the ball at the diagonal of your front foot, so that when you step into it, you're, you are at the center of your body. If I have you drop the ball at the center of your body and you make that step, now you're hitting the ball behind center. If I hit the ball behind center, the ball will wind up going over here. <laughs> okay? So it's all kind of related. It's all kind of related. If you do everything correctly, weight is back, move the curtain, step with the front foot, lead with the elbow, flex to extend, follow through. Hit the ball at the center of your body. You can hit a rock, and it will not hurt your hands. Every step that you miss increases the opportunity of it hurting your hands. If, for instance, instead of my weight being back, my weight is too far forward, then I'm just hitting it with my arm. If, instead of leading with my elbow, I lead with my hand, my hand is ahead of the elbow, then I'm not getting this fulcrum, like punching somebody, okay? I'm just, if I hit the ball with a flat hand, hold your hand up like a flat hand, okay? That one spot is taking it all. Now cuff your hand and you'll see that that actually caresses the ball. Caress. Now this ball is rather soft and it's very forgiving. You're probably not gonna get hurt no matter how you hit it. But if you develop this, these skills and you're successful with this ball, but you hit it with a flat hand, then you go to hit with this ball, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. So I want you to learn the right way of doing it on the chance that somebody may wind up playing with this ball. In Southern California, where I'm from, this ball, handball is played with this ball outdoors all the time. And, and, and I get people in their 50s that come indoors and they want to play handball with this. And they're, they're so set in their ways that they hit the ball with a flat hand and a belly button face in the front. And they've been so successful with it, I can't break that habit. Okay, so you're setting habit right now. You're setting habit. So anyway, this is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do the same thing we did, but instead of throwing the ball, you're gonna do drop and hit the ball, the front wall, go to the end of the line, same routine, the game doesn't change. <laughs> All right?
Father told it to me, however many years old I am, I'll be telling, I'm telling it to you now, you're going to be telling it to your kids. It doesn't change. You've got to keep your eye on the ball. In this sport of golf, which I'm pretty bad at, but when I line up and I hit the ball and I'm looking at the green over there, you know what I'm looking at? I look at the green. Stupid. The green's not going anywhere. <laughs> This ball isn't going anywhere. You need to look at the ball. Your head starts with your head. If your head goes anywhere, and it shouldn't move much, you want to keep your head as still as possible. You want to kind of track just with your eye. But if the, if the head goes anywhere, okay, it goes down, not up. If it goes up, two things happen. The most obvious is you can't see the ball, okay? But there's a more subtle thing to that. The, 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 the knee bone is connected to the thigh bone. The whole body is connected. When you move your head up, you bring your whole body with you. Even though it's a fraction of an inch, this is a very small ball. So, so that's, that difference between you hitting it in what's called the sweet spot, which is somewhere below your fingers and in, in the upper part of your palm, that's your sweet spot in the game of handball. So instead of hitting it in your sweet spot, an inch means you hit it there. Another inch means it's off your hand. It's very small margin of error. So if your head goes anywhere, where does it go? Down. One step closer to the front wall. Same game, non-favorite hand. Go. Sorry, Josh, I kind of uh, swung a little hard on that. <laughs> I was getting excited. Okay. our favorite hands and the time we do it with our non-favorite hands. Remember that what you just did with your non-favorite hand, first of all throwing it and now hitting it, you've just done something that very few people in life ever do. Very few people ever do anything with their non-favorite hand. We're asking you to play a game with them. <laughs> okay? Does anybody know what the sandwich rule is? Yes. Besides what a sandwich is? So the sandwich rule is positive feedback. You did this well. Negative criticism. Criticism and then the me. Yes. You got it. Me yes. is, the, is, is what you're trying to correct, and the other piece of bread is another problem. Okay. So you always kind of try to. Say, okay. You took your 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 your, your, your weight shift was really good, but you took your eye off the ball. But keep doing keep keep up the good work with the football. Some things like that. Always think of something positive. There's something else what's called the emotional tank. Young kids have an emotional tank. Okay? Too much criticism is not good for your for that gas tank. You wanna have put you wanna keep them with positive things. There's plenty of positive things you can say, you can find. So be looking for the positive. At the same time, obviously you need to make corrections, but this, but you want to look for the positive. Alright, so I'm gonna take a ball away from two lines, keep the ball in the other line. Spread out a little bit between, give, give yourself a little bit more distance. Now, instead of hitting the ball directly back to you so your partner behind you can catch it, your partner now is over here. Now instead of So, remember what we talked about, the release point, lining up directly in front of your target. Our target is no longer directly in front of us. Our target is now somewhere in the center. So you want to adjust with your feet. Adjust with your feet. Drop the ball. Hit the ball so that it rebounds. Boom, boom, boom. There's nothing wrong. You're, you're really broke the inner game of tennis or inner golf or inner skiing or anything like that. Basically, I can say goodbye to the ball. All it is is 
visualization, visualization, and just saying, just saying. For instance, in skiing, they, they teach you whoosh, whoosh. You actually say it every time you turn. But here, I'm asking you to actually say it. Drop, hit. You say bounce, catch. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I'm going to go. Drop, hit. You've got five. Five minutes, perfect. All right, catch and hold. I know everybody doesn't get to do it, but I want to take you to the next stage. All right, two for people in line on this green line. Everybody else in line behind this, behind this black line. Closure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hopefully, most of you will come back at 12:30. We'll play more handball games. I'll answer more questions for you. We'll do pretty much whatever you want to do to get better at both playing it and teaching it. More importantly, teaching it. Basically, you use the footwork. To get into position to do one of six shots. We didn't go over the six shots. 
Okay, there's six shots, just like there's six throwing. Overhand, sidearm, underhand. That's three. Where do the other three come from? The other side of the body. There's only six shots in handball. So you use your feet to get into position, okay? First step to the ball. This is kind of phase three. First step to the ball is very important in all sports. Okay? The footwork I just gave you is the footwork to hit the ball. Okay? To get to the ball, you always want to try to keep the feet underneath your body when you're playing handball. You don't want to play, you don't, you don't want to go for the handball like that. Most sports, most of the activity is done within the plane of your body. But let's say you're getting ready to receive serve, and we'll go over this more at 12.30. You slide the foot out to the side that you're going to be hitting the ball. You do a crossover step, and then you work in twos. One, two. I'm sideways, my weight's on the back foot. Okay? I stand here, ball's going this way. Slide it out, cross over, one, two. My foot's, my foot's on the back foot, and I'm sideways. Most common mistake I see in the game of handball is the belly button facing the front wall when it should be facing the side wall. We'll go over that more. 12.30. Use your footwork to get into position to do one of the six shots. Watch the flight of the ball. Handball is played successfully when your opponent is behind you. That means, another reason why you're wearing eye guards, you've got to watch your opponent. If you're watching the front wall, you're not getting any jump on the ball. The way to get jump on the ball is to watch your opponent hit the ball. Hold your arm up there, wear eye guards. So, Use your footwork to get into position. Watch the flight of the ball. Here's, here's, your, here's your life lesson. Sport proves this really fast. Make good decisions. You make a bad decision on a handball court, you're going to be running around trying to make up for that bad decision. Okay? Foot, footwork, watch the flight of the ball. Make good decisions. We'll see you at 1230.